About time you made a video, dickhead. <laughs> it's been a while. I took a break. Not intentionally, necessarily. I just got caught up in a lot of other things I was doing. And uh, particularly trading and dealing with the bloodbath that has been the stock market and the crypto market. You know, and watching the economy collapse right before my very eyes in, in spite of all the things I've been trying to do to be ahead of the game and it's I've kind of got to start coming to terms with at least for now you know for the short term I don't know long term that you know I'm hoping like all the other recessions and, and bear markets that we've had throughout you know, history, at least in my lifetime, and, and the crashes, that there will be a V-shaped recovery, I hope. You know, and by the way, none of this is fine. Oh, man, I forgot to put my sweetener in there. I'm going to have to fix that. Oh, much better. I'm a hypocrite, though. You know, I had to put my Splenda Naturals in here. Meanwhile, I've been, you know. By the way, this was twelve ninety nine. Twelve ninety nine for that. Yeah. So, but you know, as the food shortages come, I'll be a fat motherfucker. I'll be able to last a little bit longer than everyone else. Okay, maybe not because 70% of the population is overweight or obese. So, you know, at least I'll last as long as they will. All, the, all them skinny vegans, they'll be the first to go. Anyways, none of, nothing I'm about to say is financial advice because if I knew how to give financial advice, this wouldn't have happened. So, as many of you know, I'm debt free and I have no living expenses. I pretty much live in here. As everyone knows, I don't have any rent or any of that. I pretty much live in the truck and visit New York as my home base. Um, I do have some stuff stored in New York, so there's that, but 90% of my time is out here now. So, there's that. That being said, I wanted to beat inflation. So my solution, and I was wrong about this, to beat inflation was to make my money grow on things that maybe wouldn't be affected by inflation. I was naive. Uh, what, who was I to, to think that I could outperform inflation? I am now down 600, actually let me look. Since I started my investment journey, I'm down $692. I've lost 18.55%, which is even worse than the real inflation numbers, I think, you know. So I've essentially lost about three quarters or half, probably about half, yeah, that's about right, about half, a little over half after taxes of a week's worth of labor in this truck. Um, and that's not good. That was the complete opposite of what I wanted to do. I wanted to outperform inflation, which means I should be 10% in the green by now. And uh, it was a two-pronged approach. It was stock market and trading. 
Well, the first thing I learned is you can't day trade stocks unless you have over $20,000 in your fucking account. So I'm working my way up to that. But you can, however, day trade crypto. Well, I wasn't holding crypto during the first part of the crypto crash, but I was bouncing in and out, but never a big chunk. Now I'm doing big chunks in crypto, um, essentially day trading. And day trading is very intense. It's keeping an eye on the price, setting up alerts, setting up limit buys and limit sells so that I can buy, because right now it's very volatile. Like I've seen a 10% swing, you know, like it dipped down to 26,000 uh, one night and then went up to almost 31,000, you know, all in one day slash night. And I managed to, by keeping an eye on it, catch that wave and make up some of the losses. So that, that number I just gave you is after I made up some of the losses. Um, but that's my only option to, you know, it's damage control at this point, uh, because I believe that the bear market is here. I believe the recession has already begun. Just nobody wants to fucking admit it yet. I see a slowdown in freight, which will compound my goals and my financial, like when the freight starts to slow down, that means my earning power is reduced as in there'll be more time between loads like they just gave me a like 10 mile load that takes a day to do you know and it's a live unload so i'm that's not that's piddly fucking scrap even with the short haul pay and and wait time pay that's not a whole lot of fucking cash um compared to when the truck is rolling down the road so there's and I've noticed more empty miles being thrown on so they are trying to keep me busy and keep me motivated um, add to that the fact that I was down two extra days because this truck needed service and they found some broke shit so I had to wait on parts so I was actually my home time ended up being almost a full seven days you know and I was busy doing all kinds of shit during that period so I didn't have time to make video um, but you know that's gonna hurt financially I'm getting some small paychecks this paycheck's gonna suck and so's the next one um, until the wheel gets turning again um, I'm on my way to South Carolina now which is a decent amount of miles but that spending the weekend in South Carolina dicking around with local fucking loads isn't necessarily gonna pay catch up to my pay to where it should be um, but that's a risk when you're over the road is when the freight slows down your earning power slows down and for people that are leveraged with debt and with bills and you know mortgages or car payments or housing costs that's not something a lot of people are in a position to endure um, so there's going to be a little severe hurting on a lot of motherfuckers for me I'm in an advantageous position I don't need to earn a lot of money. If I sit somewhere for two, three days not earning money, I'll be all right, you know. You know, expensive ass Cinnabon aside, uh, I don't have the financial pressure that a majority of people seem to have, and it's because I'm willing to do shit like live in a truck. You know, or live in a little room, or live in a Prius, or all of these Surprise, things that I've done over the years to to make it so that I'm no longer a slave to everything. You know, I could quit this job tomorrow and probably be all right for the next six months at least until I spun up some other ways. But with the inflation where it's at, and with content creation going down and with people not having disposable income with which to pay for entertainment aka content creators on YouTube I don't foresee being able to survive as long if I didn't have this job you know and I'm having to take that into account with my plans you know because as you know I'm doing the semi-retirement thing ultimately I want to drop down to being a casual driver again and hopefully have some stock market related residual income coming in to supplement that lifestyle 
to where I only go to work once a month and then, you know, for maybe a week at a time or two weeks if I need more money. Um, and then invest that money and have it grow and, and, and multiply. Well, the economy is standing in my way right now. Um, as it is decimating so many people like there's people that have lost millions people I follow on YouTube that have been doing crypto Crypto really was a bloodbath like if you don't know if you weren't in on it I don't I, I don't even know that I could confidently say buy the dip right now. That's how bad it is That's how much fear and how I mean how much market cap crypto has lost in the last year alone is very off-putting it makes you wonder will it go to zero because um, at the end of the day Bitcoin ain't gonna do shit if people can't buy fucking baby formula you know crypto isn't gonna put gas in your gas tank so you know crypto is something people invest in when they have money to invest and between the rising interest rates to fight inflation because I'm sure they're going to stop printing money and sending it to Ukraine. I'm sure that won't be an issue. You know, you fucking Democrats, I swear. There's just no end to, to, to the stupidity that, that's going on there. And But to be fair, the Republicans are all on board with it. You know, they keep you know, let yeah, let's fucking spend all this money on Ukraine while our country falls apart. And, and and it sucks. It all fucking sucks, and it's very demotivating. You know, all of these goals I have, I've really had to take a step back from. Like, I was, as you know, I was considering buying a Toyota Sienna to replace my Prius. I think, given the way things are, I just, I own the Prius. It's only got 95,000 miles on it. I can probably squeeze 300,000 miles out of it with some repairs here and there. I think I need to just live with that if I want to be able to travel and, and do the semi-retirement thing. I'll just keep that instead of wasting a, essentially a year to buy a, a newer Sienna because they didn't start making the, the hybrid version until 2021. So that's going to be very pricey. Or to wait until everything crashes and, you know, maybe three years later to the price to buy it in cash comes down you know but if we have a v-shaped recovery it won't be an issue i might be able to still do it but as of right now i'm going to probably be looking more like do i want see i go back and forth as a minimalist on these purchases and i'm like what is the opportunity cost of that and you know if even if the price comes down to 30 grand for a used uh hybrid sienna um that's 30 grand. I could fucking live like a king for two years out on the road in the Prius, doing all kinds of touristy shit, haven't seen all kinds of things I'll never get to see again, um, backpacking, you know, getting chased around by moose and bears and on fucking mountains and shit. You know, I need to get out there and help lose some of the weight from meeting fucking Cinnabon. You know, so there's that. But I don't know. It's. It, it's hard to keep those dreams alive when you're watching literally every aspect of our life go to shit right now. I mean, and it's all preventable. All of this stuff that we're doing, all of these shitty results, you could easily change. But people aren't going to do it. Why? Because they're locked into their tribal politics. Instead of voting for the people who do right by the people and not by the corporations, this is where we're at. You know, Inflation's not going anywhere. They just came out with the second number. It dropped by like half a percentage point. And that's a, the lie version of inflation. They're not really fighting it to the degree that they did back in the 70s. You know, they haven't. They should have raised interest rates a hell of a lot more, and they should be doing it aggressively right now. And yes, that will crash the economy. That will crash the market. But we're here anyway, and you're not doing that. You know, the market is falling apart. And then you got Elon Musk sitting there saying, hey, guess what? 
I'm gonna hold off on buying Twitter for a little bit. We gotta, you know, and a lot of people are speculating that maybe he was just bluffing or whatever. I'm, well, no, he wanted to do it, but now the market's crashed, so he might be able to buy it at a cheaper price. He's got some leverage now to negotiate a cheaper deal. And can you blame him? I would do it. Shit. And they'll probably sell it to him at a cheaper price. Doesn't do what I sold off my Twitter stock at a profit already, so I'm not too worried about it. But I'll start buying back in around, you know, I won't buy back in assuming it's going to go 5420 though again. But so my plan has really changed only in I'm st I'm going to be less focused on getting a van. I'm going to stick it out with the Prius, maybe upgrade the Prius a little bit, put a, you know, like an inverter in and some solar or something, I don't know. Although solar would reduce the stealth stealthiness of the fucking thing. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to focus on living my life, and I'll probably stay in trucking full time until we're out of this mess, <laughs> you know, until the market turns around and we're in a recovery and the economy is no longer in a recession and we're talking it's going to probably be one to two maybe even longer we could be in a depression with the way the stupidity is i mean i don't see any rays of light here i don't see any sunshine that's why i can't say buy the dip right now maybe you should just wait until a year and yeah you might miss the bus but what what's you know looking at the odds what are the odds of a v-shaped recovery right now versus the odds of a bunch of bankrupt companies whose stocks go to zero crypto going to zero you know which i already know somebody's triggered that i said that that crypto will never go to zero well if people don't have disposable income to throw at it and all of the major players are dumping it right now, which is why the sell-off happened. That and the whole Luna debacle, you know. Some people losing 80% of what they invested in crypto through the fucking big Luna pain in the ass. Uh, fucking, what is it, USDT collapsed? Uh, you know, was supposed to be holding to the value of the dollar? Well, that's bullshit. All the stable coins are probably bullshit. You know, so... <sighs> All of these things compound people's mistrust of crypto, and you're not going to get the average motherfucker who can't buy fucking baby formula to invest in crypto, you know, which just leaves the big players. And the big players are going to fuck you really hard in some not so nice orifices of your body if they're the only ones putting money in, taking money out of crypto. I see the market manipulation every day. That's why I'm trying to swing and day trade it, is because I know they have an algorithm and a bunch of bot tr trader bots that are slowly selling off, selling off, selling off, and then rising and manipulating the market. Why? Because there's not a lot of regulation in crypto right now. They can get away with it. And they need to pull a lot of money out of crypto right now because they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have what's called a margin call. You see, investors don't, you know, it's if you look at the Elon Musk deal, he didn't just cash in his Tesla stock. He went out and got loans to have the money to buy Twitter. Well, that's the way most of the rich people do it because if they get loans, guess what they don't have to do? They don't have to pay taxes. Well, when everything collapses and all of these loans, which are using their stocks as collateral, well, the, the, the loans could do what's called a margin call and make and pull, make them sell off and pay the loans, which would tank the market even more. So this is going to be a big dip. And it's not going to be like the 2020 dip, which lasted a month. This is probably going to last a while, in my opinion. I'm going to keep buying during this period. As painful as it is to look at them red numbers, I am leveraged at this point with $700 in losses almost. I, you know, I have to keep plugging away and 
hope that we have that V-shaped recovery we have had so many times in the past and fully acknowledging that it may take a couple years for that recovery to happen, you know, in which time hopefully I've invested enough to not only recoup the losses but make a healthy profit in, in time of that because, you know, a V-shaped recovery is a good thing, you know, that makes a recession winnable. That makes a depression winnable, you know. If you buy at the a bunch at the bottom consistently, and we're at the bottom for a long time, and so like every week I'd be plugging away, buying stock, buying fucking crypto or whatever, you know, trying to get dividend uh, stocks so that I at least get a little bit of income that way, you know, stuff like that. If you keep persistently doing that throughout the recession, then when that recovery happens, you're gonna win. You're, you might even become independently wealthy from it, depending on how much and how aggressive you bought. But at the same time, if this is it, if the economy collapses and companies go bankrupt and just we get into a death spiral, then all of that money that you throw into the stock market goes bye-bye and stays bye-bye. So... I don't know. Feel free to school my ass on fucking the proper way to handle a recession in the stock market. Because the buy the dip theory is very painful right now. I, I know it's psychologically difficult. This is the hardest part of investing is, is weathering these economic storms. But I'm doing the best I can. You know, and I'm still... I gotta really try and maintain my perspective in that I'm in a better position than a lot of people. So I'm gonna, that means I did something right. By being a minimalist, by being debt free, by, you know, being able to not be as attached to having lots of things or a big apartment or a big house or a brand new car. Um, has put me in a position where I can afford to pay, you know, twelve ninety nine for Cinnabon, you know, and then you throw a couple slices of pizza on top of that, and that was twenty one dollars. You know, uh, I'm appalled that I'm paying that for gas station pizza and a fucking unhealthy pile of sugar and fat. You know, it shouldn't be that expensive. But I know that right now there's somebody that's probably eating ramen noodles because they can't afford to buy meat or produce. So, there's that. But what the fuck do I know? Because I'm not an expert. I'm just an asshole. As far as my unhealthy journey goes, I uh, have capped out at 226 pounds. I'm not, I do not seem to be gaining any more than that. Uh, at least not yet anyway. I, I don't think that'll continue as I get older, but you know, we'll see. I'm not planning on going keto again anytime soon, probably while I'm on the road. I honestly, part of the prepper in me is like, I'm okay getting a little fat right now. Um, carrying around, uh, you know, another 50 to 60 to 70,000 calories on my fat ass comes in handy if World War III kicks off to the degree which it's looking like it might. So, you know, is what it is there. As long as I can find clean water, I'll survive a period of time without that. So, oh well. You know... But technically, it's just an excuse because I am addicted to that shit once again, you know. So, there's that. So, I'm just going to keep plugging away. I'm staying out a month this time to make up for the seven days I had off. Um, and then I'll take another full week off. I'm thinking in New York. I, I'm on the fence. A part of me wants to get out west somewhere and, and do something cool. But I don't know. It's not looking like it's going to be fun to do that. I mean, tell me if you're out west. Uh, I've, I'm seeing a lot of footage of the wildfires, and I know from experience going out west 
in wildfire times, it's just not as good. The air quality is shitty. You can't see as far. You know, I don't know. I think I'll need to wait another month before I do a trip out west. Like maybe late July or August, I'll t you know use the company to get me out there, and I'll rent a car and, and go try and enjoy some some uh, leisure time in the mountains or something. I still want to go to Glacier National Park, and I think that's my biggest destination this year. And I think July would be the time to do it. You know, where it's not super cold, and. Uh, yeah, that's that's my plans. Sorry I haven't been making fucking videos, you know, between you know, I'm just I'm I'm low on motivation. I don't even know if anybody gives a shit really that I make videos. I mean, some of you do, obviously. You've sent messages, but you know, from the view counts, you know, I that the, the last video I did had 800 views. You know, clearly the algorithm isn't pimping my shit out or nobody just likes my shit anymore you know either way I'm sure I'll get back on the horse I have been also working my music quite a bit um, which I plan on making some putting out some music only videos uh, real soon but right now I'm kind of in the you know practicing and, and trying new things and experimenting and learning uh, new plugins and stuff like that and really just getting good at at music instead of trying to make music just trying to learn I'm in the learning phase right now and I may eventually get uh, another um, hardware synth to have out here so that you know I don't you know I'll do a video I think my next video that I put out is gonna be how to how I make music out here in my spare time and, and my new setup I have made some changes to my setup so I'll uh, when I get some time later this week probably this weekend from the looks of it I'll put a video out on that try and keep your head above the water you know hard times are here it's, they're not coming they're already here um, if you're not feeling it yet, you might want to start preparing or you will feel it. Um, it's different for everyone how to prepare for this stuff, so just keep that in mind. You know, my situation isn't the same as other people's situations, and so you should prepare according to, you know, if you're in debt up to your eyeballs, you're going to have a rough go, you know. Uh, and you might have to change your lifestyle. But if you've already changed your lifestyle and you've prepared to be able to survive with less, to lower your lifestyle essentially, that time is here, you know. Start looking up minimalism. There's plenty of videos out there on it. There's still there's plenty of that and how, you know, start learning financial responsibility start getting out ahead of this shit instead of waiting for it to kick you in the nuts you know at least that's what I'm fucking doing have a nice motherfucking day and shit onward to South Carolina it's hot out now too oh they fixed I got them to fix my truck and the idle problem so now if it's over 70 degrees, it'll it won't shut off. So, yeah, that that was a huge upgrade. That the quality of life just went up 40% for me out here just for the fact that the truck can be idled when it's hot, uncomfortable, kind of like it is right now, but I shut it off so I can make this video. I'm sweating for you. My fat ass is sweating just for you. All four of you that watch this. I don't I don't know why I still make videos. Have a nice motherfucking day and shit.